guys, so today we'll be doing Trump Star New Blood and after that Trump Team. And later today we're gonna do um Fire Emblem Heroes and a play to Requiem. So yeah. Congratulations, you're recovering extremely well. I don't see any problems with your pancreas. You're free to return to LA whenever you're ready. Have you thought any more about the favor I asked? I'd really like to go with you and assist you in the OR. You don't give up easily, do you? Sorry, but the answer is still no. Trust me, I have my reasons. You don't owe me anything. You need to think about your future. That's why I'm asking. I want to train alongside the world's best surgeon. I don't think you want to put your fate in the hands of a doctor who's about to lose his job. Go back to Concordia. You owe them an explanation. This may be the last time I walk these streets. I can't believe the hospital's actually closing. It's all so sudden. <sighs> well, I may not have made any major medical breakthroughs, but... Coming here wasn't a total waste. I suppose I'd better start thinking about what hospital I'd like to work at next. Oh, I almost forgot. I was gonna go get some coffee at Jake's. It's the hospital. Hello? Dr. Blaylock, are you nearby? Yes, why? There's been an accident at the construction site. We need your help. I'm on my way. She's in no condition to be moved. We'll have to treat her at the scene. She's lodged beneath the frame of the church. Our equipment's already been loaded onto the helicopter. Elena? Dr. Vaughn, please let me come. I know I can help. You won't regret it. I can't let you do that. You're still... I'm fine. You've seen that, Doctor. We can't waste any more time. We're taking off. Come on, Elena. It's better to be safe than sorry. Suit yourself, but it's your life that's on the line. I'll take my chances. Oh, Sister Catherine. Oh, Dr. Blaylock. My chest. Uh, I can't. Don't worry, sister. We'll get you out of there. It's no use. The frame's too heavy. We won't be able to move it. but we'll have to leave her where she is for now. Elena, get the instruments and anesthesia ready. Okay. She's suffering from a chest contusion and cyanosis. We need to open her up immediately. All right, Valerie, you take the lead. Her chest must have been compressed when she was caught in the collapse. Her heartbeat sounds distant. She may be suffering from cardiac tamponade. If that's the case, then blood will collect in her pericardium and cause diastolic heart failure. We don't have time to transport her back to the hospital. If Valerie's diagnosis is correct, we need to drain the blood. I have to save her, no matter what. All right, Doc, you lead, and I'll assist. I won't let you die, Sister Catherine. Okay, let's begin the operation. I can't believe we have to perform a thoracic surgery in a place like this. Let's hurry and operate so we can get her out of here. Please treat the external injuries before we move to her interior. All external injuries have been treated. Quickly, open her up. It's like we thought. Doctor, I suspect there's hemorrhaging within the pericardium. Use the ultrasound to locate pockets of blood while treating the other wounds. If there are multiple hemorrhages, the pericardium tore again. Please treat it quickly. Please suture the incision close. Doctor, the pericardium... 
for signs of crush syndrome. I'll monitor her condition. You did it, Valerie. I knew you had it in you, but I never imagined your gift would awaken so suddenly. I'm actually surprised myself. It wasn't the technique that was important for the human touch. It was the opening of my heart. I finally understand what Dr. Montgomery was trying to say in his book. It was a difficult operation, but I feel like I can make my decision now. I want to continue working as a doctor. Yeah. 
I've got some thinking to do myself. Have you finished backing? Yes, just now. I apologize for being so selfish. No worries. This is the hand Fate's dealt us. As long as I remember that Concordia is just a stepping stone, it won't be that bad. But what about all the staff members here? What are they going to do? Oh, don't worry about us. We were able to negotiate a deal with Fairbanks Hospital. Everything is going to be transferred there. All of our patients, staff, and equipment. However, we may have a shortage of world-class doctors. My daughter and family have offered to look after me. So I'll be going to Seattle. The warmer climate should aid me in my recovery. If you happen to relapse, please contact me immediately. I'll drop whatever I'm doing and come operate on you. Thank you, Dr. Vaughn. But I'll do my best to make sure you won't have to. I gave Concordia a number of conditions under which Valerie and I would return, Elena. The most important being that you would be our assistant in the operating room. Dr. Vaughn! We expect nothing less than your very best. When I first arrived here at Montgomery Memorial, I absolutely hated it. But it's true. The greater the challenge, the more you appreciate the experience. Dr. Hoover was a strict but amazing teacher. Wow. Uh, yes? The operation that the professor is asking us to perform will be extremely difficult. If we're going to be successful, we'll have to work together. What are you saying, Marcus? Of course we will. We're a team. A team that has endured the harshest of winters. some time. Yeah, it took me a while to decide. Have you been bedridden? This disease can be debilitating, but the symptoms haven't progressed that far just yet. I'm in better spirits than I look. In fact, I even make the rounds occasionally. Of course, that's only for the time being. What's this disease you're referring to? Relax, my dear. The symptoms have temporarily subsided. Once I've made the necessary arrangements, I'll explain my situation in greater detail. After all, this is a confidential matter, even within these walls. It's a secret? Yes. You could say that I am both a patient as well as a research subject. For now, I'd like you to resume your normal duties. I'm sure Rousseau will find something for you to do. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Well, we'll get to work then. Call if you need anything. Marcus. 
You went against my orders and ran off to Alaska. But in the end, you were forced to return here. I won't reproach you, as long as you accept your fate. Is that what you want me to do? Indeed. Hi, Dr. Blaylock. Oh, hello, Elena. Are you starting today? Yes, I am. I actually just returned from a brief vacation. I need to hurry up and get back into the swing of things here. But it's hard because there are so many new faces. Valerie, are you in? We've got an operation to perform. Are you serious? Russo took the liberty of volunteering us. Nice guy, huh? I have a feeling this is just a taste of what's to come. All right, I'll go prep. Elena, can you assist? Definitely. I'll start setting up immediately. Allow me to begin the briefing for today's operation. Well, um, oh. Am I making you nervous? Just pretend I'm not here. Please continue, Elena. The patient is suffering from a putrefactive lung abscess due to Staphylococcus aureus. Both the x-rays as well as the CAT scan support this diagnosis. You have two objectives for this operation. Look for a shadow using the ultrasound, make an incision, and drain the pus. And of course, excise the tumor that's causing the problem. Is there anything you'd like to add, Dr. Russo? Oh, no. I'll merely be observing. We'll try not to disappoint you. Ready to begin. Let's begin the operation. We'll show Dr. Rousseau why we're here. It's festering. We need to drain the pus. Otherwise, it could lead to inflammation. so good. But according to the diagnostics, the affected area may be larger than it appears. We need to use the magnification tool to take a closer look. Looks like the diagnostics were correct. We've got more work to do.
at the area where um, oh. that you haven't allowed yourself to get rusty. Surprised? Well, you could have suffered from frostbite. <laughs> ah, yes. I must explain our new POSA procedures. Things have changed since you left. The charge needs to be submitted to the clerks on the second floor, and surgeons are required to attend a case review session every Tuesday morning. However, we won't be needing you there just yet. I'll call for you when it's deemed necessary. Well, then... Excuse me. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be implanting a pacemaker? Yes. You'll be performing an exchange operation to upgrade the one currently inside the patient. You'll also be performing the pre-op examination on her. Why us and not a cardiologist? Because I believe you two are better suited to perform the procedure. A team of specialists will be available to assist you, but I doubt that will be necessary. It seems they're expecting a lot from us, but you wouldn't know it by the way the staff's treated us. This can be considered as a preparation phase for the actual operation. An appropriate pacemaker has already been selected. You'll be implanting the same type I'm currently using. The same pacemaker you're using? Are you sure it's not gonna hurt? You'll be fast asleep the entire time. It'll be over before you know it. But what if I wake up? Will it hurt? I promise that won't happen. The medicine will keep you asleep, no matter what. If it's gonna keep me asleep, then how will I wake up? Will I sleep forever? Well, um, you'll wake up because you'll get hungry. Chloe, you heard that your heart isn't doing well, right? Right now you're okay because doctors put a machine in you that helps your heart. But we found out that machine isn't working like it should. So if we don't put in a new machine, your chest is going to hurt. You don't want your chest to hurt, do you? No. All right, then. The operation is going to be tomorrow. Let's both do our best. Come on, Chloe. Let's go back to your room. Don't worry. There's nothing to be scared about. You'll be all better real soon. Opening up a child's chest for the second time. As a doctor, I know I shouldn't be faced by it, but it's still heartbreaking. This operation has nothing to do with the professor's orders. Let's just concentrate on doing our best for that kid, okay? Lion, it really hurts. Come on, there must be something you can do. I'm sorry, but we didn't find anything wrong when we examined you. That medication I used before seemed to help. How about some more of that? As I said before, I can't write you a prescription. Uh, Dr. Vaughn, can you please help me explain to this patient? Me, Dr. Chen? He won't listen to reason. And I refuse to write him a prescription. He's just pretending to be in pain because he's addicted to painkillers. What? Are you calling me a liar? Forget it. I'm out of here. What does he think this is? 
a street corner, he was wandering around, so I offered to help him. The first thing he said was, I need drugs. How did he get in? I don't know, but I should report him to security. By the way, Dr. Vaughn, I heard that you're conducting a pacemaker procedure today. That's right. Since I'm the new guy, I have no choice but to follow orders. I suppose that's true. Well, good luck. If all goes well, I'd like to ask you to be my assistant. I'll do my best to live up to those expectations. Let's begin the conference for little Chloe. Please do. Your objective for this operation is to replace the patient's pacemaker. First, you'll have to stop the old pacemaker. Then, remove it and insert the new one. This operation will require great precision and will put a lot of strain on the patient's body. Please proceed with the utmost care. Of course. This is a very serious operation. She's only a child, so even a small mistake could be fatal. That's true. Well, good luck, you two. I'm ready to begin the operation. Today, we'll be replacing the patient's pacemaker. If I remember correctly, it's the same model as the professor's. Oh, really? Well, let's have a look. Her existing pacemaker. Please be careful, doctor. Okay, good job. Looks like you're ready to go on to the next. Doctor, the patient's going into cardiac arrest. We can't use the defibrillator because of her pacemaker. We'll have to massage the heart by hand. Wait for the hands to overlap, then press the A and B buttons simultaneously. Doctor, your timing's off. Wait until the hands are overlapping. Damn it. Until we've completed the operation. 
There's a chance she'll go into cardiac arrest again, so keep an eye on the electrocardiogram. If that does occur, then we need to massage her heart immediately. Understood. Well then, are you ready to remove the pacemaker? Use the antibiotic gel to disinfect the area where the lead connects to the heart. Cut the lead, atta cut the lead attached to the heart. The EKG. Please be careful. False alarm. Let's continue. And now that you've cut the lead, then hurry up and remove the lead before the pain. Now, Jim, looks like you've got all the blood. Now, quickly remove the lead. Now, place the lead. Perhaps you're related. You need to pull in the direction that the lead is facing. She's going into cardiac arrest. We've got to do something. Please drain it. Looks like you got all the blood. Now, please place the lead on the tray. And don't forget to suture the slit where it was inserted. Doctor, we 
Wait. You have to massage the heart by hand. Wait for the hands to open. Doctor, your time is off. Wait until the hands are overlapping. Girl. There's a chance she'll go into cardiac arrest again. Speak back. Understood. Use the antibiotic gel to disinfect the area where the lead connects to the heart. Cut the lead attached. Cut the lead attached. <sighs> the EKG. Now that you've cut the lead, okay. Uh -huh. Fibrillating. Stop the procedure. She's going into cardiac arrest. We've got to do something. Yes, it certainly is. 
but don't get carried away just because you feel better, okay? Now the pacemaker that's inside your chest is like a new friend, yet it's going to be with you for the rest of your life.
care of the wounds, we can reassemble the bone fragments. Hold on. Yeah.
Damn. Hi. Hi, Dad. How are you? I'm good. Hi. Hi. Did you sleep well? I did.
pieces now. The police treat us on the new rules first. We don't have much time. Did you go somewhere? Yeah, I had to go get blood work from my doctor, and then I went to Costco to get gas, and some wine, and some breakfast bars. Uh-huh. I see that you are both quite skilled. I'm sorry, you are? I'm Irene Quattro from Caduceus. Nice to meet you. I heard there was an emergency, so I changed into my surgical gown. But I... Valerie, is this the woman you were telling me about? Thank you, ma'am. It's an honor to receive such grace. A doctor with a healing touch. It's been a while since I've been surprised like this. If the opportunity arises, I'd like to see it used again. I'd be glad to show you. This is an impressive hospital. I hope that we meet again. Please excuse me. What do you mean, Marcus? Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. We were told you wouldn't make it, but you... you saved him. I just did my best, Mrs. Garcia. Considering his injuries, it's a miracle he survived. He must have an angel looking over his shoulder. I don't know how we'll ever repay you. no need for tears. Now, let's discuss his future treatment options. Oh, as long as he's in your hands, Dr. Russo. Hmm. Oh, it's you, Vaughn. Marcus, he's... It's not worth getting upset over. The patient is all right. That's all that matters. Professor Wilkins has asked to see us, so we better get going. I suppose you're right. Dr. Russo, is something wrong? Oh, no, it's nothing. Please come with me, Mrs. Garcia. Let's go see how your husband is faring. So, I heard that Rousseau took credit for everything. You must be disappointed. I'm just glad the patient's okay. He's an excellent doctor, although rather shrewd at times, and I would never trust him to operate on me. That's why I summoned you here, Marcus. You have a rare talent. I didn't want to come back. I'm aware of that. Regardless, we'll meet tomorrow to discuss my operation. The procedure is scheduled for four days from now. I'll leave you to choose your team. Okay. I led you all to believe that I was suffering from a chronic heart disease. But now that my preparations are complete, I will reveal the true nature of my illness. Dr. Rousseau is on the team too? Yeah, but he won't be operating. What I am asking you all to do is treat an unknown disease. Yes, I'm asking you to face the unknown. An unknown disease? By certain means, I received a mouse with an unprecedented illness. It was a pathogen born as a result of gene-related medical research. I isolated it, analyzed it, and became deeply interested in it. Despite my initial fears, it was such a Are unique Are you working at disease. home, Dad? Yeah. Oh. Curiosity. 
capacity. Man's greatest weakness. Dr. Vaughn? As a member of the medical community, I immediately realized the importance of this discovery. And so, I began researching the disease. But before I could complete my research, I myself became infected. Its communicability between animals and humans was quite a surprise. It's a tragedy for us all, Professor. It breaks my heart to learn of your infection. What was the means of transmission? It's too late to ascertain now, but it must have occurred while I was researching it. I may have accidentally pricked myself with a needle. My hands aren't as steady as they once were. I don't believe it is highly communicable, but we should still be careful. One thing is for certain, it's not an airborne disease. And what about your condition? You seem to be rather stable right now, Professor. I do have some data which I collected during my experiments. It's dormant at the moment, but it becomes active when the carrier experiences stress. Its invasiveness is quite strong, and it's at least as serious, if not worse, than an acute virus or a parasite invasion. So this operation must be performed right away. That's why you with us. Yes, it is a new disease, so as you may suspect, no medication or vaccine is available yet. Extraction is the only viable option. Dr. Vaughn, this is a serious responsibility. Indeed. This disease manifests itself in mysterious ways. I've tentatively named it stigma. We will refer to it by this name for now. But please keep this information confidential. I will also grant you access to my research data, but you are only permitted to read through it. Infected accidentally? That can't be. That's not its nature. The professor's hiding something. Forgoing your meditation today? Don't allow this disease to trouble you. Just accept that it's beyond your comprehension. Should someone with your condition be up at this hour? I have one more favor to ask of you. That's why I'm here. I'll save your life. What more do you want? If for some reason the operation is a failure, then I want you to destroy all my research concerning stigma. <laughs> what? This is to be my research and mine alone, whether or not the operation is successful. You should have no objections to this. After all, wasn't it your wish three years ago that it all disappear? Well then, I bid you good luck. I've taken a look at the data, but I don't know what to say. That makes two of us. The pathogen's mobility is simply unbelievable. Who knows what kind of damage it's capable of? Based on the data, it's unlikely that medication would be effective. Burn it with the laser. That's the only way. Has there been any change in the professor's condition? He's still stable. He should have enough strength to endure the operation. If the professor's data is accurate, then this research will make medical history. Mistakes cannot be made. I presume you understand that. Relax. We've got it under control. He's right. This is an important procedure. I can't afford to fail. We're ready to begin the procedure. Based on what we know, we expect that stigma will become active once we open up the professor. Please be extremely careful. Lacerations? But we didn't see any on a CAT scan. Are you suggesting that the pathogen did this within the last few moments? We need to suture the wounds immediately and try to prevent any further damage. Well done, Doctor. But please keep an eye out for the pathogen. There it is. My God. Look at it. All right, let's do this. Get the laser ready. Keep 
keep using the laser. There we go. Stigma's gone. Marvelous. The recounter will be... Wait, he's not stabilizing. We better take another look. Stigma again? But how? His vitals are dropping. You have to suture the wounds or they'll hemorrhage. We don't have much time. Okay. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to move on. Yeah. I, the only <laughs> thing is they have it, and it does give you the perception it's a little healthier, even though it's a fried chicken tender with a made little piece of sauce. So, I mean, I, I, I don't feel like we need to have it. I, I, I'll be honest with you. The signature sauce and the tenders are the star of the show, so to me, that's kind of like where that's that's the 99% of that graph is right there. It's do, do we do we say you know what pepper cheese do make it like zing a little bit like we talked about like you needed some vinegar so like is there, is there another vinegary component? Thank <laughs> you. 
that's fine. But again, well, after two hours, you think they're going to be crunchy? No, they're going to be soggy pickles. I'd rather, I'd rather have warm set pickles or, you know, whatever. I would I would say no. <laughs> they're gonna get they're gonna get soggy and, and we've already we've already been down the road as far as the season of tenders and it fails. It fails. So I'm sorry, but like let's make that signature sauce the bomb. Like you know what I mean? Like it doesn't need ranch seasoning, it, it's gonna be great with the signature sauce. I'll take I'll take a look. I'm working on my Friday, I'll take I'll take a look at his list real quick but Keep it simple, man. It's gotta be simple. I hate to say it. I'm with my circumstance care. Tell me what's going on. A fire broke out of the power facility. It's being contained.
have a bandage in place. It's You heard a single word I've been saying? You're not helping. You're a nuisance. Oh, shut up. Oh. 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 Damn right I'll order you around. I'm the best one here. If cooperating is so important to you, then do what I say. Later, asshole. Dr. Torres? Yeah, thanks. I saw you the other day. What are you doing here? Beginning?
cardiac arrest. This isn't good. Check for a pulse. Get the epinephrine ready. Idiots, there's no time. Start CPR. Huh? Well, who should I... so angry at them. You're damn soft on them. You got a problem with how I do things? Go with those losers. Oh, hey, Dr. Torres. <sighs> She's always like treat me to dinner. You want to come with? Uh, I offered to take her, but she keeps inviting people. Uh, sorry, I'll pass. Good for you, though. Eat up. What? Do you have other plans, Dr. Torres? Uh, come on, let's not bother anymore. Let's go, Emma. Oh, all right. We'll see you later, then. So not likely. This is new. Something bothering you? Leave me alone, big guy. Well, um, this is just me thinking out loud. While I was running away, I heard a voice crying. I ran back and saved her. I didn't even think twice about it. Well, what's wrong with that? You saved a life. That's good. What's so good about it? I'm the one who started it, remember? Still, the kid I helped kept thanking over and over. Contact with the child you rescued? Huh? Oh, that reminds me. I heard a letter came for me. I've been so busy that I haven't had time to get it. <laughs> I see. There's an important point you're missing. Huh? 
there is a limit to what even a hero can do by himself. A hero acting on his own only acts in vain. Hero acting on his own only acts in vain.
too.
so stubborn they had to come help you? Such an idiot. What's so bad about relying on others? Just think of them as tools to be used for your own devices. That's not the problem here. I just can't stand the fact that they say my ass. Well, I can definitely sympathize. In my line of work, you start to see what people truly are. They're selfish and ignorant. It makes me not want to help them. Still, if you needed help from them, what does that make you? I, I'm not really... But, well, what's wrong with a hero who isn't perfect? <laughs> We're doctors. Our only goal is to save people's lives. And making a fool of yourself save lives <laughs> isn't worth it.
It's good. Hmm. Oh, how did it feel to make a fool of yourself again? <laughs> it's okay. <clears throat> you know, we're humans. We only have two arms. No matter how good you are, you can't do everything. Home? Hanging around with you tires me out. Later.
done everything by myself until now. I don't know how to ask people for help or what I should do. It's simple. Be yourself and don't worry about it. Huh? Odd to work hard on becoming less independent? I believe it's important to be true to your own nature. Dr. Friedberg? Where's Dr. Cunningham? I don't know. He was right in front of me. Six minutes for the paramedics to come. I don't know how many people there are, but I have to help them. I can't expect any help. I'll have to do this alone.
keep those wires in the module. We have to leave them alone and extract only the glass before moving it. It's over. All the patients have been transported. <sighs> We're done. Everyone? Oh, goodness. You can't relax yet, Dr. Torres. You have an important job. Huh? Seriously, come on. Take a look around. Huh? Everyone's waiting for you. Please, tell us what to do next, Dr. trust and look up to you. A hero? I'm... Come on. How long are you gonna space out like this? <sighs> We're all counting on you, Miss Hero. Uh, keep searching the area. Split up into groups. Going to eat. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat that leftover risotto. I was going to eat that leftover risotto. It's given in recognition of honor and value. You know, it's this one in the bowl. Yes, this that's ball. mine. Yeah. yeah. Look at Maria. Such dignity. <sighs> I'm sure recent events have helped her mature. Do you both seriously think that? You really don't know that girl, do you? Phew.
take a break and we're gonna have to continue later today. Bye.